Welcome back everybody. I know it's been a while since you've seen me. We're in March already and I set a goal for myself of this year of uploading one long form video every month. So we're right on schedule. Yeah. It's going so well, I can assure you. Before we go to the forge, I wanted to explain a little bit about the anatomy of what I'm going to be making. So it makes a little more sense when you see it on screen. So we'll uh, head on over to the chalkboard for a, well, you'll see. Welcome to another certified chalkboard moment. Uh, this is a three leaf divider, right? Uh, which comprises of three leaves. The leaf portion refers to this area here. Oh man, I forgot to put the leg. So there are a couple different components of these things. It's made up of just simple two, two parts mostly. We have the single leaf and the double leaf. The single leaf is housed inside the double leaf. We have a rivet that holds it all together. We have our leaves. We have our legs, we have points or tips, pretty simple. Uh, this top portion here, I like to call the joint. Okay, so now, now we'll get into the forging. Now that we have a little bit of understanding as to what, what happened, what, what's going on here. So thanks, uh, thanks for being here for another certified chalkboard moment. Let's, let's uh, get into the forging now. I should also note that I'm using wrought iron to forge these dividers because wrought iron is a really pleasant material to work with in a coal fire. When kept at the proper temperature, it's really soft under the hammer. And then for the bench work that I like to do, it, it cuts with a file really, really nicely. I'm also trying to show as much of the process as possible when making these, so you're going to see a lot of forging and a lot of filing in this video, and that's to help illustrate just how much work goes into something like this, but I think it could also be a valuable resource if you're trying to make one of these in your personal studio. With the single leaf leg forged, I then move on to the double leaf, and I needed to make the stock for it. I only had round bar, but I wanted to use flat bar for this section, so I draw some out over the horn, so it goes pretty quick. Once I have my stock how I want it, I cut it off the bar and begin a process of book matching to create the double leaf leg. And if you're unfamiliar, book matching is where you create a mirror form on either end of a bar and then I'll cut it in the middle and fold it together. Once I have my pieces book matched and folded, I put it back into the fire to prepare for forge welding. Even though wrought iron has natural silica in it, I still give it a little, little borax just in case, you never know.
With the double leaf leg welded up, I then prepare both of them for welding on some carbon steel tips. Drop tong welds are definitely a skill that I am not a master at, so this takes me a couple tries to get right. But after this first attempt, I noticed that the carbon steel that I thought I was using was improperly labeled by myself, so I quickly grabbed another bar of the carbon steel that I actually knew what it was, and I forged that down to a similar dimension, and then we went with that for both legs. And this still took a couple tries to get to stick and it looks real clumsy as I'm doing it but after a couple tries I, I ended up getting them to stick. So the next day I did the same thing for the single leaf after doing the double leaf one and boy howdy did this one give me a hard time. It started, I thought I got it on the first go around and I was pretty stoked. And then on the second one I thought I had it, I was pretty, pretty happy about that, it only took two tries. Yippee. But in my excitement, I ended up forging it a little too hard and it just pops right off. And then third try, and of course then it sticks, but it sticks in like the ugliest way it possibly could have, all crooked and shit. so I guess that's, that's what I deserve. A little extra flux and then uh, squishing it down carefully and it blended together all right. So we'll, we'll go with that. Okay, cool, so that's the bulk of the forging, but you're probably like, hey Nate, this is cool and all, but uh, they still don't fit, you, you bozo. So I take them over to the vise and give them the potential to fit, which involves cleaning up some of the surfaces on the inside of the double leaf and the, the single leaf, trying to get those angles to match nicely. I ended up kind of overworking the single leaf a bit too much, but it, it comes out in the wash. Then back at the forge, we put the double leaf back in to get hot. Once the single leaf is ready at the anvil, I then get the double leaf and I squish them together. This is the magic part.
I then put the whole last thing in the fire and try to close up any gaps that are still remaining. And I, yeah, it, it comes out, it's all right. There was this little moment where I reached in to focus with the lens and I ended up setting my shirt on fire for just a second. So sorry, mom, uh, everything's fine though. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. Okay, back at the bench, we got a lot of filing ahead of us, but before I do that, I wanted to put some wrought iron washers on these. This is an old pair that I have that I imagine is from like the 1700s, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. And they're just cool, they're old and they still work. They have big washers on them and I wanted to do that. I also have a small pair that I made recently out of wrought iron without washers, so just so you get to see what they look like when they don't have washers, just a rivet. After getting the washers roughed in, we'll come back to those later, but in the meantime, I begin the long, arduous process of filing everything on this. It was a lot of, lot of cold work here. Start squaring everything up in the joint area using some big files. When you remove the scale on wrought iron, sometimes the grain will begin poking through, and that's always kind of a special moment. I then draw file this surface to help make it nice and flat. So when I go to rivet with the washers, there aren't many gaps that show up. They meet nicely. To polish the washers, I do this absolutely genius move where I put a drill bit backwards in my cordless drill and then super glue them on. From there, I just clean it up using some sandpaper, which works a treat. We can kind of forget about the joint area for a second and begin working on the legs. Working on something this large and long, it has the tendency to rotate in the vise. So I use this work rest that I made. It was designed by this guy, Peter Ross, who is kind of like the, the goat when it comes to doing this kind of bench work. I have a short on working on a pair of box joint pliers that I made using this work rest. And in that video, I do commentary in a way that sounds like I created and designed this tool when that is absolutely not the case Peter did and I just wanted to kind of retcon that but this thing rules I can't believe I went so long not having one and working on projects like this With the square kind of roughed in on these, I then apply some die gum to do the bevels. It just makes it easier for me to see exactly the shape I'm creating using the files. Once the bevels are roughed in, I give it a draw file and then for some reason in the middle of all of this, I decided to rearrange like my entire workspace. So I wanted to give you guys a little window into the disaster that I'm, that you can't see off screen. It's not usually like this and it drives me pretty f crazy when it is. So I, I thought I might, you might appreciate that.
back over at the ugliest anvil in the world, it is finally time to assemble these suckers. Once I apply an insane amount of tape to everything, I then begin the riveting process, which is just a series of really tiny taps using a, a small cross peen hammer. finally ready to heat treat these things and there's a little bit of gap between the two points so I decided to insert a small wedge between them and then I wrapped everything in baling wire to try to hold everything in place while I quench them which doesn't backfire at all. You hear that? Ain't no way that'll come back to be a problem later. Hey. So I think my genius idea to insert a wedge probably hurt more than it helped. I should have just wired everything together without the wedge. Nevertheless, they got hard, but after tempering, I decided to straighten them. So I'll leave you with the straightening. Getting better? No, I'm straightening these legs right now. I'm so scared right now, dude. If you want to be. If you want to take part in my success or failure. Are you filming it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, good God. How hard are they? Uh, I tempered them to blues. So kind of soft? Kind of softer than, yeah. Than straw. Still really hard. Yeah, I mean, luckily 1045 is pretty forgiving, but this is still like nerve wracking. Ah, f <laughs> yeah, I was feeling, I was feeling pretty discouraged after that happened. I mean, when something like that happens, it's like, dude, I like, I'm, what the f am I doing with my life? So I could have, I could have ended the video here and just moved on with it and started working on the next project. There's still so much that I wanted to show on this object. So I figured I would finish it somehow. I think it was important for me to kind of show like, yeah, even though I've been doing this for 10 years and like, I haven't amounted to much, but I still fail a lot. Well, that was a weird kind of rant. I don't... <laughs>
If we're gonna make lemonade out of this thing, we're gonna make the best f lemonade we can make. Okay, so back at the forge, I decided that I wanted to turn this into a pencil compass, so I need to forge components that will hold a pencil. What you're seeing me forge out now is the bit that the pencil will go into. Um, I call it like the shoe thing. And the other component is just a simple thumb screw. After soldering and filing those components, I was feeling pretty good about this thing again. With it nearly complete, I decided to add some details using a small series of files. And I like doing this by hand because it just gives me the quality that I'm looking for. I could do it with a Dremel or a rotary tool of some kind, but using a file it just it gives it a quality like you can't get anywhere else. There's these nice subtle irregularities and it just it makes it feel like it's a really old piece of ironwork, and that's that's usually what I like to achieve in my work. I don't like for things to look super perfect. I want things to look handmade and like someone touched them. 
You can still find these design motifs in furniture and architecture, but it's a little less common on a modern metalworking tool. With the project pretty much done, I think now we can roll into some glamour shots and actually show you how this thing works as a drawing compass. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for being here because that was a bumpy ride the whole way. So I really appreciate you sticking it out with me here. If you like this video and you want to see more videos from me more frequently, make sure you like this video, leave a comment down below telling me what your favorite part was because I go through and read each and every single one and they always bring a tear to my eye, even the bad ones. So make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you also share this video because that helps to crank the proverbial hog of big algorithm. And I will. See you in the next video. Gaze upon the face of evil.